Hi, my name is Peter Slavin. Health starts in the community where people live. It's really their access to housing, good schools, good food that have a huge impact on the health of a population. These are the things that we refer to as the social determinants of health. These social determinants account for about 80% of the health of a population. So it's really important that we try to focus not only on providing great medical care, but also doing what we can to address these social determinants. You might be wondering, what can I as a doctor, a nurse, a patient care coordinator possibly do to address issues of poverty, housing, etc.? Well, you were about to watch five of our staff go that extra step and, and address a social determinant of health, and I hope you'll uh, enjoy watching their examples and learning from them. So I met this patient. I was providing prenatal care for her out in Chelsea Health Center. I asked her if there was any stress at home. She revealed that her partner was uh, physically abusive towards her. We talked a little bit more about her fears and it came out that her partner was undocumented. So she was really concerned that if she called the police, if he was arrested, that he was at risk for deportation. And he really was her only financial and social support in this country. I tried to explain to her that accessing domestic violence services, accessing the Haven program, was not the same as going to the police or involving the legal system. And that we would really work with her on what she was comfortable with and what she was ready to do. In the end, she did actually work with one of our Haven advocates, especially working on financial independence and housing stability for her and her children. So I always remember diagnosing this young Jordanian college student with epilepsy and I started her on medication. And when I saw her in follow-up, I was surprised that she had stopped the medication because her father forbade her to take it. And, and as we talked, I realized that in her culture, epilepsy is, a, is considered a stigma that would it's, it's like a family curse that would prevent her from getting married or having children. We talked quite a bit about it and um, over time she came to understand that, that it was most important for her to take care of her health and she chose to, to restart the medication and she's, she's done very well. Her seizures are well controlled. It's helped me realize how important it is to understand someone's cultural background and how that can directly impact their health. There was an elderly male who came into the emergency department with his son. And in speaking with the patient in Spanish, I realized that there was an issue around understanding how to take medications. The patient himself did not speak any English, and the son, while he was conversant in English, I suspect may not have been able to read English. Um, in addition to that, he had very limited health literacy. So, you know, literally the concept of tapering a medication did not make sense to them. So I started off by just taking all the pill bottles, um, taking each dose or each pill that he was uh, prescribed, writing what, what it was and how to taper it. Then going one step further, I just filled his pill boxes. So after Jamie went through the illustration part of this, I went in and went over it again with them in Spanish and wrote it out in Spanish for them. We worked with them in various different ways mm -hmm. until we were sure that they got it. Early in my career, I worked as a clinical teacher and I was teaching a new nurse about how to discharge a patient. The new nurse and I um, put together a one-page paper where we listed all the medications the patient was going home on and the intention was for him to put that on his refrigerator as a reminder. As we got closer to discharge, I had this aha moment when I read in the record that the patient was homeless. So when I thought about how we would have to discharge him differently, I realized that giving him the paper prescriptions was probably not a good idea. He might not fill them. So we sent all of the prescriptions down to our own pharmacy at MGH and had all of the medications filled for him. 
It's so important not to assume that someone's social situation is the same as yours or the same as anyone else's. We don't expect our individual providers to take on this whole burden themselves. That's why we have the Center for Community Health Improvement that works with cities and towns, local agencies to develop programs to address these social determinants as well. Nonetheless, when you're dealing with individual patients, we hope you will take these uh, issues into account. Please know that the time, caring, and attention you pay to the patients, the family's overall situation, including social issues, can make all the difference in the world.